And a good morning to everybody out there. Let's do Thursday, like I always say here. <laughs> now, let me say that you deserve a pat on the back because you've always almost made it to the weekend. It's a Thursday here, and hey, we never fail to leave you guys with a good feeling, especially as we approach the weekend. Yes, it's a day to breathe and take a sneak peek at the days before to bring back happy memories. Oh, yes. And of course, in the kitchen, we have Mike and... Winfrey. Hey, hey guys. What's guys people doing? doing? What's uh, going on? This familiarization is a... As in, a, are you concerning. guys about to release this song? <laughs> it's okay. What's the, what's the album going to be called? <laughs> Back when? You got, you got, you got me, whatever. I don't know. It's Beauty Queen and Ordinary no, Man. Uh, ben, you don't, you don't have imagination. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure you have uh, a name for us. No, I don't. No, we'll come up with a name after. Ibu Shuga. After Ibu Shuga. Ibu Shuga. Ibu Shuga. We'll plan it, we'll plan it. You guys are looking good in any case. <laughs> yes, they are, anyways, yeah. yeah. Now, I can feel the subtle excitement here in the air, perhaps because the weekend is just right around the corner. Like always, Thursdays are that feeling you get just before a big event. Yes, welcome to another special edition of your number one feel-good breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, indeed. And we are here to make sure that you start your day correctly with that feel-good vibe that we bring to you every single morning of the weekdays. Yes, please, and David, stay with us through the entire show. We've got the next one hour for five minutes to bless your screens with goodness, beauty, and fun. Mm -hmm. yes. Talk about beauty, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. My name is MMA Okoche. And of course, my name is Mazino Appeal. Remember, you can use our streams to show, uh, watch the show live. Uh, that's tvcentertainment.tv and also on Facebook, where we are right about now on live. We would also like you to download our app on any Android and iOS phone and send in your comments across our, all our social media platforms at TVC Connect. Yeah, and we also implore you guys to please follow us. Yeah, okay? Follow us, and yes, we love your comments. And I still love your comments, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Keep them coming, whatever they are. We love it. We are at TVC Connect across all social media platforms on Facebook, TikTok, and on Instagram. I'd also like to ask, mm -hmm. on this, are you sure you're okay, though? I am okay. I'm fine. Why? Why? Yes, indeed. You are all welcome. Everybody, one and all. Hey, Winfrey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm asking you. How are you? Why is everybody concerned about me? I'm fine. I'm okay. Why? Those what? were dangerous comments. I know, right? Mental yeah. health. Mike, did you read some you need of the to comments? Check it. Oh, you haven't gone through them. <clears throat> is, that, is, is there an issue? It's entertaining. <laughs> it's, it's, it's entertaining. Thursday, man. October is. I, yeah, I, it's I, the 15th, isn't it? There was this cold almost yesterday mm -hmm. into today. It just started giving me this end of year vibes, man. Mm -hmm. Seriously, you just started feeling it. It started feeling like last week. Last week, yeah. yeah. So it's like the air this, is dry, like super dry. Yeah, this uh, Christmas year and the year vibes, I, I don't know, I didn't feel cool. Really? Yuletide really? really? vibes is here already? Yeah, there's yeah, really just a little. I can't no, no, say it. End of year, I said end of year. End of ember, okay. Not Yuletide, perhaps. Because, you know, Anyways. it's been the last three Christmases have been very well kind. <laughs> <laughs> but just end of year vibes. You were going to say? Yes, um, I was going to ask. Um, I mean, I haven't read all of the comments mm -hmm. so far since mm -hmm. the whole we'll white money there. issue. Yes, we yeah. are. Uh, because we haven't seen this week. I mean, oh, like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen this week. Seen this week. Yeah. Uh, well, don't worry, MM. I'm fine. The comments are not new. I've no, I've always wondered kind of how people, you know, um, get throws, like how uh. they handle it. Well, yeah, handling such things is actually something that comes with this field. I mean, being in the public eye, you should yeah, expect that, that people will have their different opinions mm. and they would not share the same ones as you do when it comes to specific no, well, uh, true. details. That's so true. It, it's to be expected. Um, it's not the first time it's happened to me, and I'm sure it's not the first time it's happened to any of us here. Um, we get these kinds of uh, comments. Blinked. <laughs> she blinked. She <laughs> blinked. <laughs> different it's opinions. Mad. How you yeah. handle them, mm. however, um, you, there are different ways you could choose to just you know, read from them, uh, read them, learn mm -hmm. from them, or interact with people. But do you read them? I do read all of them, all uh, of but them. I choose them. not to interact because okay. interacting just simply brings you down to a certain level that you might not want to be... Uh, 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 I don't think I'll go through those comments. I don't want Why to comment. Like, I want... Hey, you, don't come for me. <laughs> <laughs> In any yeah. case, just like those comments, you can't avoid them. We also can't avoid the weather. You're welcome. Let's do the news. My name is Mazino Appeal. You already know. Now, the forthcoming number of state governorship elections has taken a new twist following the de uh, defection of the deputy governor of the state, Nkemo Keke, to the All Progressives Congress. 
The deputy governor officially dumped the ruling All Progressive Grand Alliance in Anambra State and pitched his tent with the APC during a meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari yesterday. The APC caretaker committee chairman and Yobe State Governor Mai Malabuni and the Imo State Governor Hope Uzadima were also present at the presidential villa to receive the party's newest member. I've been the deputy governor of Anambra State for the last seven and a half years. I don't think I've contributed positively the way I would have loved to contribute to society development. Of course, um, the problem is always uh, deputies are called spare tires. And I believe that I have a lot more to contribute to society and I can do a lot more. And when APC approached me about uh, joining a party, I thought you know, seriously about it and I felt, well, if I want to make contribution to society, you can only do it two ways. And former president of the Senate, Ken, Ken Namani, has commended the national leader of, uh, the, commended rather, the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, for his continuations or contributions to the growth of democracy and good governance in Nigeria. He stated this when he visited Asiwaji Tinubu at his Ikoi residence in Lagos after his return from the United Kingdom. He thanked the former Lagos governor for his invaluable support during his time as president of the Senate. Senator Namani said, and a quote here, your many contributions to the growth of democracy in Nigeria stand strong. Your role in NADECO and your efforts along with those of others helped in terminating military rule, end of quote. Now, Senator Namani also presented his new book titled Standing Strong, Legislative Reform, Third Term and the Issues of the Fifth Senate due to be presented to the public on the 21st of October in Abuja. Asiwaju Tinumbu thanked the former president of the Senate for his visit and advised other political actors to write books to document their experiences and efforts to build and solve the nation's problems. Now, let's turn our attention to judicial matters. Uh, the Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered former Minister of Aviation Femi Fani Karade to pay a fine of 200,000 naira for being absent at his uh, rearrangement or stand the risk of having his bail revoked. Justice Daniel Osayago said that having gone through the court's file, he observed five different letters by the, the, by the defendant seeking adjournment on the same medical grounds. Mr. Fani Kayode, counsel, uh, his counsel, pleaded with the court not to revoke his bill, saying that a letter has been written on behalf of his client, as he is currently on bed rest at Kuba General Hospital, Abuja. He's being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on allegations of money laundering to the tune of 4.6 billion naira. He and two others have pleaded not guilty to the charges and were granted bail. And that's all for the news, but we still have sports and, of course, Mike standing by. It's still Wake Up Nigeria, and with the headlines today we have, first off, I'll be looking through Tribune. COVID-19, federal government to enforce compulsory vaccination of workers December 1st. To issue revised protocol within 24 hours, take South Africa, Turkey, Brazil off restriction list. And right here on the top, we have housing agencies in 24 states fail, fail to make impact in last 12 months. Reports insurgents establishing camps in Abuja, Niger, dangerous Afeni fair ones, calls for urgent action for Nigeria not to go under. And we see that on page eight. 2022 budgets, reps call for improved non-oil revenue, power transmission, others seek downward review of six trillion naira deficits, borrowing may increase budgetary allocation for road infrastructure gap. We see that on page 19. And down here at the bottom, okay, I'll just move on to the nation. PDP chairman, North Party leaders, consensus plan shaky. And at the top we have banks get deadline on dead customers BVNs. We see that on page 11. Igboho seeks nod for treatments in Germany or France, page six. 
Uzodima renames Heroes Square after Ndubisi Kanu. We see that on page five. Senate invites Works Ministry, others over foreign loans. We see that on page four. And over to the punch. NMA health workers defer as federal government plans ban on unvaccinated workers. We see that on page two. Workers must be vaccinated or present negative test as from December 1, federal government. Available vaccination does not... Doses, n available vaccine doses not sufficient, barring workers insensitive, says J.K. Su. Welcome, it's what's up and about, and uh, we are, well, you guys are flanked by two gentlemen, but then again in the middle, beautiful ladies. Hey, we made a lady sandwich. Ladies, sa I don't know, whatever. A oh, man sandwich. No, 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 you guys are, Just whatever. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's up and about, guys? So it's still the week where we're celebrating a girl child. Mm. And uh, something very interesting came to uh, my note. Can I borrow your phone here? Because it's open on there. You can use mine. Just don't go through my messages. It's planned. It's all white money messages anyway. In any case, there was this very interesting post here put by a man who told about his experience with a friend and that uh, his friend was trying to uh, get him to hug her daughter. And uh, she was offended that her daughter wouldn't hug him. And he goes on to tell that, hey, no, don't, don't make her, don't force don't her to force hug her. me. It's, it's not something that you should do, especially if it's a girl child. Mm -hmm. The fact is that when you do that, you're telling them that they can familiarize themselves very easily with just yeah, anybody. Anyway. And that is actually bad because you are not protecting them against predators. Mm -hmm. And he also somewhere in the post told about the fact that you need to set boundaries by making your children refer to people older than them um, with a title, title in front of their names. Mr. So-and-so, Uncle So-and-so, that it's very necessary that if you don't do that, you're eliminating boundaries. And by eliminating boundaries, you're actually exposing them to um, these familiarizations that are very, very bad for um, children. And, and it helps predators get an easy road in, mm. if you know what I mean. So I thought it was very interesting mm. that we should actually discuss this. Because most of us here, all of us here, the ones that have kids have daughters. There's three daughters in between all of us here. And I think it's very important that we discuss it. I don't know what you think about it, because you've got two daughters yourself. Um, I would like Mike to come in. Mike does first. have children. Would, yeah, but at least he has a nephew. That's what we talk. Mike, have you seen them already? I don't understand. You talk to just who come out and talk. I'm not talking. Well, Adam, what do you think? I would like Mike's opinion on this, because you, because you, one, you're you're a young man. You're not. I, I know you're not married yet, auntie. but you recently. <laughs> Your sister recently had a kid, yes. so I would like to hear your, your opinion. I don't have a <laughs> the fact is, this Mike has been very excited about this child. Uh -huh. We have not heard word about this child since. Right. So but, my nephew, Mike. Much, but, but he I also noted in what, here what? that you also have to educate your male children, mm -hmm. not just there's, your Yeah, there's something children. you mentioned when it came. What I would want to mention is when it came to when it came to the power you mentioned about familiarity. The one where you get a kid to call anybody older uncle. That's mm -hmm. not. It doesn't follow. It now breeds or it now it now makes them yes. You know, not no you only have the uncle is even at school, like you said, we should understand that the kids should learn to call the person Mr. Mm -hmm. Or you understand, but that uncle auntie you no. Know, mm. Okay. That so, level um, of familiarization. Nah. I went for a wedding last week, my cousin's wedding last last week, and um I saw I saw young kids, young girls and boys dancing in a very provocative manner. Oh, wow. That's very rampant these days, sadly. So, um, and I sat down. <laughs> I should have left though, mm. but I wanted to do a buko. So I sat down somewhere for a few minutes watching them. And the only thing that was in my mind or that was in my head was, I am so worried for Elsie and Eliana. Mm. Because, because, and then I kept asking myself, what if I'm not here mm. to safeguard them? Yeah. You know, to protect them from mm. all of these things. Mm. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it goes beyond, you know, telling your kids where to sit, where not to sit, who what to, to talk who to, to, talk to, to, who yeah. not to talk to. What happens when you are not there? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So you stand a risk of helicopter parenting when you do that, but you are correct. Because are we still in that era where it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a village, a village to to exactly. Mm -hmm. No, we're definitely it's not a, there. Are we still in that era? We're definitely not in that era anymore. Anyways, my take on this is, as much as, yes, I believe, I mean, boundaries should be created, right? I, however, I'm sad um, at the innocence that is being taken out. Mm. Because to be very honest, um, yeah, at least that particular child didn't want to hug that guy, right? Mm -hmm. But like, normally, growing up, I would see my aunts and uncles and I'm excited. Yeah. I literally just jump on them. Ooh. Do you understand? Now, it's so sad that that responsibility has to literally be moved to the child. Yeah. When Ooh. the responsibility, I mean, because they're rapists, do you understand? No means no. Yeah. They're rapists out there. The rapist is Harvest. the problem, not the dressing, not Ooh. the child, yeah. not the freedom of, of expression of the child. Do you no, I totally agree with you, and I understand what you're saying, but... In the exactly. That's the yes. By the way, it's let's say, us growing up, it's not like as if these things didn't happen, though. They actually mm -hmm. did happen. Many people fell prey to them, quite frankly. No, definitely. If we knew any better, definitely. we would actually, since back then, have put in um, safeguards. More, to make more sure measures. Yeah, safeguards. more measures. Yeah. So now that we're more aware, I think mm -hmm. it's okay. At the risk of taking that innocence away from the kids, yeah. making them more aware, even at a an earlier age, which is very unfortunate, but to safeguard them, I, I'd rather that mm -hmm. than anything else. It's, yeah. it's sad, but it's it's the sign of yeah. the time. Now, yeah, so, because, I mean, they're kids, like you said, I mean, they're innocent. Yeah. They see people and they're just, you know, overtly overjoyed because, mm -hmm. you know, they, especially because they are growing, so they want to meet people. The minute they're out there, they, they're so excited, excited they're curious, mm -hmm. true, you know, yes. about all of these things. But then because we live in a perverted... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you now have to protect them. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 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 was, I was also going to uh, note that he didn't say that stop them from hugging everybody or anybody. He said if they don't want to, don't, don't force, force them. them. No, so you have to take not. note of, of that definitely fact. You know? mm -hmm. And I wish that there's more that we could do. Unfortunate thing about the party that you went to, I wish that there was more that we could do as individuals or people who have access to media to media, try and push yeah. this message. You know, out that was what I, I, that's what I sat down there and I was thinking about because then I'm like, I can't walk up to these kids and say, no, don't yeah. do that, so don't do dress do? like that. Do and then I started the looking thing, around to see if I would see like their people parents. People who do things like that. What? Do you understand? Just when you're talking about how the community grows a child. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? When I was growing up there, uh, if I was behaving auntie, outside, my auntie, friends are not there. The kids, this, this, this one, this, the kids of this one, hey, whoa, don't even go, hey, hey, hey. This one's even told that I don't understand. There was always one nosy auntie or uncle that would always go out of their way when it was not their business. They will report you if you're so you know, got tail, any mm -hmm. yeah. those busy yeah. Yeah. Those I wish that there was more of them. <laughs> there was more of them. Yeah. No, now everybody you. mind your business. Everybody just mind your business. We're just and we're very protective of our kids. In that instance, if you try to, to tell somebody else's kid that, hey, you exactly. shouldn't be doing you should that. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't talk to my child. It's <laughs> my child. That's my child. Yeah, exactly. Am I blind? Yeah. In your case, would you do the same thing? Would I? If someone was correcting your child. No, 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 no. I would allow you correct mm -hmm. my child. Mm -hmm. If my if my child is wrong, I mean, mm -hmm. my, my, my helps. There are times that they would, you know, you know, scold the girls when you do something that's not right. Mm -hmm. And I would even scold the girls mm -hmm. that, no, you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then you should apologize. Okay. That's why they're very, um, I'm sorry, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're very, when it comes to, um, um, they're very emotional. They're mm -hmm. very in swing or in, yeah. in, into their feelings, yeah. you know, intuitive with their feelings. And I think that's something that we also need to, um, so establish those boundaries. You know, if they want to do stuff that you know that's right, allow them. If you, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think it's all just protect, let's, ah, I don't know. Hey, it's still I a mean, collective effort, is what yeah, I think. I think uh, if we can, let's, mm -hmm. and especially that we have these at our uh, beck and call now, you should be able to put out such messages to enlighten people. Um, whatever work of life you are, if you find yourself that you, you have that uh, opportunity, do educate people. Let's protect mm. the children, especially the girl child. Is that week when we're celebrating them. So, yeah. hey. Welcome back, people. You're still on to Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yes. It's the kitchen, and this morning with me is Shebiu Timo. Good, good morning. How are you see. doing? You're good. Thank you, thank you. You are looking good as well. Thank you. Love the ensemble. Mm -hmm. ah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this morning, Shebiu Timo is making rice and carrot sauce. Ever heard of carrot sauce before? I haven't. But 
Chi will be taking us through this morning's breakfast. And I am super excited about carrot sauce. Apart from the fact that carrots has a lot of nutritional benefits, exactly. let's go through the ingredients for our carrot yes. sauce. These are um, pepper mix. We have okay. tomatoes, rudo, onions, crayfish, the powder crayfish. Okay. Spiced already. And blended. Blended. Okay. And these are our carrots. Mm. We are, sometimes we have different kind of doing the carrot sauce, okay. but today it's going to be on a different side. Okay. We are going to dice it. You okay. can blend it together, but today it's going to be diced. Okay. This is our fish. Titus, Fried fish. Precisely. Okay. And this is our pomon. This is our crayfish, boiled and our bell pepper. I'm supposed to have used different kind of bell peppers because you know, this is what I was able to get in the market. Okay. And this is rice and this is onions. Okay. And what are we doing with our rice? We're just we are, boiling we are rice. Boiling okay. Yes, um, there's so someone watching right now and is saying to his or herself, uh, I don't know how to boil rice. Shivio Timo, can you help them out, please? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't be too ridiculous. I want to know how to boil she rice. She says I shouldn't be too ridiculous. I won't even boil water. I'm not being ridiculous here. I'm just being factual. Okay. Really? Yeah. Yes, I'm putting... So tell us, how are we boiling our rice? Yes. How are we cooking it? We are cooking it. We are just, I'm, I'm watching it and I'm putting it. Because there's, I'm, I'm shorted of both, so I'm going to use this do the washing of the rice. Okay, no, 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 let's not do that. We'll get you some okay. um, a bowl where okay. you can wash the rice. Okay. Now, let's explain the process for our carrot we, sauce. We are boiling our rice. We salt it. We put all the tables. Are you parboiling it and then you drain the water off I or you're just going to boil? No, I'm, I'm parboiling mm -hmm. okay. it. I drain the water. Okay, great. Then I'm going to dice our carrots. Okay. Why the water is boiled is... So what boiling. actually makes this sauce carroty? Like, is it because we are using carrots it's in we are the using, pepper mix? We are using carrot in the pepper mix. Okay. So okay. that's why it's carrot So You know, sometimes when we run out of pepper, mm. there are some days that especially tomatoes... Mm, that can be really expensive. expensive. You can actually use this and you are good to go. Right, yes. right. And let's not also forget that carrot has, um, it has this particular um, taste. It's really rich in lots of, apart from the fact that it's rich in nutrients, it's that very juicy. You, yeah, it has a lot of vitamin C. And it's very good for the skin. It is good for the skin, guys. Yeah. cream, oil. I know. Like I said, it's really rich, very, Don't very, very rich. Um, yeah, we should. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we're um, dicing our, um, our car. chopping our carrots, yes. and um, we're going to get this ready in a bit. But we're going to before we begin our carrot sauce, we are going to wash our rice and parboil it. If you're just joining us on the mor and this morning, um, this is Shibu Timo, and she's making rice and carrot sauce. But before we let you into what's going on here in the kitchen. Let's head over to the couch with our display with Winfrey. Thursdays are for arts and it's time for a mini art exhibition with Olayemi Fagbohungbe, an artist and architect who believes that the boundary of what is achievable can be pushed and should be pushed. Welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. How are you doing? I can't see, like, your, your white teeth is distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm serious. Wow. <laughs> okay, so how are you doing today? Yeah. All right, so we have some very interesting art pieces right here that we'll get to looking at in a bit. But before then, tell me, this journey of arts for you, where did it start from? Yeah, it started far back in my undergraduate years in Amadou Bede University. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, I had these cravings then that, like, I needed to follow around the art. Even though, yeah, I was, um, my major there was architecture. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, after service, I did a course of arts. That was when I now break in with that at the University of Arts in Lagos here. So, it has just been more of like a research program. So, it has been more of a research program. It has been more of like trying to like express myself in um, ways that, I mean, I couldn't really think of or thought of. Over time, I mean, I've been doing that. Over time, I've been doing that. Over time, I've been doing that. So... Okay, okay. So now you're telling me about the, the arts um, exhibition that's been going on. I mean, it was all about um, um, the, the, the way black people have felt over the years. 
and all that. And you know how um, for a very long time we have this inferiority complex, the way you put it, right? And all of that because we just feel, I don't know, for some reason the white folk are probably like more superior. So you've put in work into changing that narrative, right? So tell me about that. Okay, so this um, entire body of work, it happens to um, the titles portray what it means. Like we have um, titles that suggest certain virtues. For instance, we have beauty, we have power, we have, um, we have leap, we have strength. So it's what makes us black. We were trying to push it out in a, in a, in a great light. Mm -hmm. So what makes us black as black people and then what makes us, as in what gives us that ability to be able to emancipate mm -hmm. from whatever mindset that has really held us back in terms of more of excuses, basically. Yeah. So when you see like that piece over there, which is being tied to it as well, that is leap. Okay. Right? It's trying to like progress forward, mm -hmm. that progressive movement, like mm -hmm. from a stage to leap out. So this was actually created out of the same black emancipation. Yeah, right? yeah, Okay, yeah. so now tell me, what's the idea behind okay. this guy? Like if you, if First you, of all, what is it? Now this is a bronze piece. Okay. And um, like the entire exhibition is all bronze works, okay, about 18 great. bronze works, yeah. So okay. like this particular piece over here, it's, um, it's been titled the Tesawaju. Like, if you see the, the movement, you try to see this energy level, like this strength. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say, like, on your mark, get ready, move, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So it's trying to leap out. And okay. that is exactly um, what it means that, okay, let's say if you're in this particular position, or you're in a state being mm -hmm. tied down or laid back in mm -hmm. a particular position, and then probably you have all manner of excuses that, okay, yeah, this is the reason why I cannot do this. You just need an energy push or something yeah. within you. Mm -hmm. that, that spirit is deep, deep within you. That mm -hmm. energy level is within you to mm -hmm. actually leap out. Mm -hmm. So you could see all that, that stress level, that ability to leap out from that particular sculpture. Okay. And that's exactly what it suggests. Okay. The leap. I think I, one of the major reasons I love art is because it's a way of expression, right? There's some yeah. things you can feel. Once upon a time, I used to paint and do all that, right? But you know how you, you don't, don't want do these skills. Yeah. They'll just disappear. <laughs> I don't know where they went to, but yeah. yeah. But it's a way of expression. It's a way okay. you can express yourself, right? Even things you can't put in words, sometimes sure. you can paint them and put them. I think that's what I love. And I love the fact that you're using this to send out a very valuable message. I mean, we all know what this is. But I want to ask you this question. So for at what point, or what was that experience that made you realize that seal is like these black people we are looking down on ourselves what was that experience did you have a bad encounter with with a group of people or something okay like as i said this journey started far back in my undergraduate years mm -hmm. for instance like i remember you know when you get to amount Bello university this is mm -hmm. like, like one of the first generational universities in nigeria and all yeah. that so like when you begin to start seeing some kind of crazy, lovely architecture, like, ah, who did this? This this white man, that white man, and all that. Okay. So at the end of the whole day, then, <laughs> if you look at the contemporary what our people are doing, it's like they're not really pushing the boundaries. I was like, why? 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 Okay. So the, the, the question was like, why? Mm -hmm. So I keep studying, like, and then growing up in northern Nigeria, like, I saw primitively our, I mean, these are great buildings. I yeah. get into this house of architecture most of true, the time, I see that to go and true. do something, I see the roof, I see the touchness, I see how creatively, Creatively, it was done like how many thousands of years ago. Okay. You get to Zaria City, you see ancient, like ancient, like this is what they did. Mm -hmm. So why was it that we we're not able to build on that? So imagine you building on that. What mm -hmm. would that be now? Mm -hmm. So but now it's more like we've just forgotten all that and we have lost it also. And then going about to now study um, things like ancient Egypt, what mm -hmm. they did in the pyramids, and mm -hmm. after that, then it now stopped. Like sure, I begin sure. to wonder, like why does why? it always stop? Look at the great things they did in Benin. Why does it always stop? Why, stop. Does, why does it continue? It over and oh, wow. So now let's else? talk about that beautiful guy over there. So now what is that expression about? Okay, like as you can see, he's trying to do like a kind of movement and then holding this kaki key. Okay. So, I mean, I titled that a house word called Sunny, like awareness. Okay. For instance, like you see the kaka key is more of like a kind of long local trumpet that um, the king's, um, like uh, his, um, his praisers usually blow when he's around, like maybe the emir or something. Mm -hmm. So it's more like praise and awareness, they sing praises to the king of all those things. But like this title is being um, labeled awareness. Mm -hmm. So, but in the narrative I'm using for this is that, okay, if you're aware, if you're aware of your current problem, mm -hmm. if you're aware of like, okay, this is the reason why, I mean, I'm in this particular state and all that thing. So that is 
They say the greatest, one of the greatest way of changing a, changing a thing or something is by creating the awareness of a thing. Once that awareness is there, subconsciously it's being registered that even if you want to do that, but like it just jumps in in a way. But you know, all these problems that we are facing, if the awareness is kind of, is strong enough that it's already being registered in our consciousness, okay. then I mean, it's also a step mm -hmm. change. So now th these are some of your works. Yeah. So now that particular one, what is that about? So that's a, a title that love, I mean, if you go back, that is um, yeah. love with boldness you get. Like, love with boldness. if you see the hand, it's kind of forming a lovey sign, and yeah. then it's kind of chest out. What is this made out of? They are, I mean, they're all, they all bronze works. They're all bronze works? All bronze okay. works. Okay. And you do this yourself by hand? Everything. Oh, yeah, give me some tips. How? If I want to, well, give me some, give me, like, the basic tip for, like, bronze work. Where does it start uh, Let's from? say you first, um, first have the idea of what you want to do, mm -hmm. like, you have the narrative you want to tell, the story you want to tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, from there, there's a way it plays out. You do your research, you kind of study more me, in depth. Give me the practical work. Okay, practical. I'll have the idea. Eh, yeah, yeah. The so once you have gotten the idea, you, yeah. I mean, you first sketch, sketch out your ideas yeah. down. So after you have sketched it, mm -hmm. once you are okay with whatever you want to do, then there's this, you now create an amateur, like it's uh, like a market. Okay. A, a prototype of whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe with clay or wax. Mm -hmm. So once you have done that, so, I mean, once you're okay with what you want to do, you now blow it out with okay. the skill you want. Okay. So, once you have gotten that market right, and then you have seen all the forms and the dynamics and what you want to achieve in mm -hmm. the prototype form, mm -hmm. then you now make a bigger amateur. Based on maybe if it's life side, half life side, how many feet, Depending on what whatsoever you want. You want. To achieve, then you now yeah. blow it out based on the parameters you already have in that market. Okay. So, from there, like I use cliff first. Okay. So, you now I mold, mean, it. mold everything. Mm -hmm. So, once it comes out where you take, the, the mold, as in with your with silicon, once you're okay with it. So once it has gotten the silicon, then mm -hmm. you now use the outer mold, which I use basically is still fiberglass. I used to take my outer mold. Fiber, okay. So after that, well, with that, then we're now going to cast it with bronze. Cast it with bronze. That's awesome, amazing. How long have you done this for? Uh, like for, I started this 2015. Okay, 2015, that's great. So now what is the, um, um, the, the acceptance of black artists? What is it like in the industry? Just very briefly. Uh, well, we thank God for Lagos. Lagos happened to be at the edge mm -hmm. in the art market. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's a great thing because a lot of people have the opportunity of doing their work and showcasing it in shows and all that. Yeah. And then there's this general reception if the work is good enough and all that. Like, there's this embrace that. No, oh, okay. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, I, have, I think I'll visit your studio very, very soon. Um, I had good a great time you. talking with you. Me thank too. you. Uh, thank and you um, of course, we'll be going on a quick break right now. And when we return, Wake Up Nigeria continues. Now you're welcome here on Book Chat. And today I have a very interesting book here. It's time for us to, well, give you an insight into what I've been reading for the past two days. Uh, on today's book, uh, it's titled Inside Life, I Bend, I Don't Break by Shei Uluyole, a writer, choreographer, and also humanitarian, popularly known as the founder of Dream Catches Academy. Now, Shei has written on popular TV shows as well, like Tinsel and also Hustle, and she is here with us here today. You are welcome, Shei. Good to have you here. Thank you. Glad to be here. That book, I must say, I don't know if I can put my life in pages like you have just done. Now, your book is, uh, it's very interesting, and I have one question. Is it real? Yes, every, every single thing there Every single is thing. Real. This is your life yes. in pages. Yes. And uh, I noticed that even at the end, at the end, you even put receipts in forms of emails. These are emails, I should think. But mm -hmm. first off, tell us what this book is about so everybody out there has an idea of what it is. So, um... The book is basically my journey through psychological abuse and domestic violence and also love bombing and me coming to the realization and basically me trying to get out of the situation, the mm -hmm. struggle of getting out of the situation, mm -hmm. the struggle of living with the trauma mm -hmm. even after being physically out mm -hmm. of the situation. Okay. And then most importantly is how one woman can literally save the life of another woman even though... Yes. So entirely a business. Interesting. But... Nice that you said that because I, I saw it that way as well because you want people to actually learn from the things that you've been through. Now, mm -hmm. um, in the book, you're married. Uh, did you stay married all through? Or yes. are you still married right now? Yes. Yes, you are. However, the effect of putting everything that has happened inside of the marriage on, uh, on paper and letting everybody see it, how does that affect your marriage even currently? 
Um, so I'm separated. So mm. I think that the only reason why I'm still married is because there is an amount of time in Nigeria. Like you, there's no annulment yeah. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and I tried using the domestic violence, but, but mm -hmm. again, like I said, I think there's a period before you can get okay. a divorce. That's the reason why I'm yeah. still married. And right. I think that for me, it's it's a healing process. Like okay. I said, like. It's, it's, it's not more, I mean, I want to inspire other women to know that you know what you can stand up. But yeah. for me, it's like, it's something that I knew that I needed to say for me to reach mm. my own healing. I like that you've put it that way, a healing process. But let's enter into the book now. Let's start from chapter one, um, the beginning of the end here. First of all, I love the way you describe things. It's so real. It's like as if I'm looking at it in picture, living color, technicolor. I actually enjoy that bit. Um, and your, uh, your, your power of description is so beautiful, I must say. However, these are things that are very emotional that you're describing here. You talked about the beginning of the end, like you said, uh, where you discovered that uh, your husband, in the book here, was actually cheating. And that is something that women, when they go through, is very, very traumatic. Uh, to be able to remember the details of this and also to expose it to people, make yourself vulnerable, how, how, how... How do you feel about all of this? Um, so I journal. Mm. So I think basically what just happened was I edited my journal that okay. I had been keeping. And also because I was constantly gaslighted. So I always mm. had to write down events so mm. that I would remember exactly what happened. Yeah. And um, I think for me, it wasn't even necessarily the cheating. It was all the things that happened mm -hmm. after. So it was... I mean, if you read the book, there is no proof. It was just me speculating. Yes, exactly. I never really had proof. proof. So it was just... Um, and and that was it. Because inside the description of how you discovered or came to realization, let me put it that way, that mm -hmm. there was something going on was very, very detailed. And it has a toll on your mentality. You even noted that. In some parts, you ask yourself, am I going crazy? Or am I the one who's just speculating out of um, the ordinary and, mm -hmm. uh, and all that? A lot of people go through that they might not be as expressive as you are. Apparently, that's why you've put it down in a, in a book, so that people can learn from your experience. But it goes beyond that, I would like to believe. I'd like to think that there is a certain, I, I don't know what to call it, that, that has made you uh, write such a story. Mm -hmm. What has been the um, response from people who have read your book to your story? Um, I think I've had a couple of persons call me and say, oh, I can relate to, you know, something similar has happened to me. I've had persons that maybe knew me personally say, mm -hmm. oh, I knew something was wrong. And I think that sometimes when I get calls that I know that related to the book, I usually ignore the calls. Because, okay. I mean, I'm just like, like you said, I know that, okay, this is like a very big step. Mm -hmm. But it was a step that I knew that I had to take for me. Mm -hmm. And... I think that at the end of the day, I'm a person, and so I'm learning to put myself first. Mm -hmm. And what I really wanted to do was write a book yeah. and release that book. So it's a healing process for you. But yes. what about your partner in this case? Uh, what has it been like for him? Um, I, do, I do not know. If you, if you read the book, I literally, like, I ran away. You ran away, yes. So that's it. And I think that... For me, the best I could do as a person was to, I think there's a note there that says that no real names were used and anybody, mm -hmm. which is in crew, it was mostly anybody that their real name is there actually went to them and said, oh, I'm writing in my book. May I? What is the experience? May I use your name? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's mostly it. And I think that at this point, you don't even know who I'm talking about. So mm, okay. that's okay. just it. We're just right. talking about someone that's somewhere. You don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm basically the one. And I think also the interesting thing is most people did not even know that I was married until mm. I went through domestic violence. Okay. Most people did not know. It was something that I did not want to do, but I, based on pressure, I did it. So I didn't, it was never public. Mm -hmm. Everything I did, most people did not know until I put out a tweet. And people were like, oh my goodness, you were married. So I think that that just, I'm not trying to save anybody's face, but it still does save face because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it has, it's only like very close personal people to me. I can already see that you it's know? a very emotional thing. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. getting emotional right here, right now. Um, and uh, for everybody else who's going through domestic violence or a cheating spouse and, and uh, th those kinds of circumstances or factors, um, have you had opportunity to meet with these people and have they 
told you how or what effect this book has had on them? No. When, when, when it first happened, I think I spoke to two people. And I mean, for me, it's just, I just always say that choose yourself. You understand? Like, choose yourself um, as much as you can. And I would definitely be open to, you know, speaking to women like that. And mm. for me to just always be think about it and choose yourself. Make sure that it's what yeah. you want to do because it's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. You, you think that the hardest part is living, but like that's literally the beginning. Mm -hmm. Living is literally the beginning, especially in the community that we live. Yeah. Especially how people see divorce, mm -hmm. religiously, both culturally, how people view separation, even in the family way. So it's like you just have to be ready. You just have to know that once I leave, you need that mental strength. Mm. Um, just go to therapy. Yeah, therapy is good. Inside life, I bend, I do not break. I think it's safe to say that you wrote this book for yourself as well as for everybody out there who might have gone through or is going through what you have gone through. One short piece of advice to anybody out there who's in that instance. <laughs> I think I said just choose yourself. I think that's it. Choose yourself. And um, if you have maybe young girls around, because I have lots of young girls around mm -hmm. me or young women, just ask yourself if you would want them to make that choice. And yeah. The choice is theirs, yes, basically. Yes, exactly. The, the, choice the choice is, is theirs. Uh, this is a very emotional uh, book chat here. And thank you very much, Shay. Um, I'm definitely going to read this again. I think it is very, very interesting. And I, like I said from before, your art of description is amazing. Thank you. And hey, um, I, I, would, I would love to see um, everybody else read this book. Thank you very much for coming on Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you for having me. And if you're me. out there, the emotions are real. The book, the names might have been changed, but the instances are the same. Um, you want to grab a copy and perhaps maybe you should read it as well. It's called Inside Life, I Bend, I Don't Break by Shay Uluyale. We'll be back. It's still Wake Up Nigeria here for you. And uh, yes, the kitchen has been, well, things that are sizzling and very soon the aromas are going to be <laughs> overwhelming. MM, how's it going in there? It's going very nicely, Mazino. Thank you very much. Uh, Shibyo Timo is still here, hard at work. As you can see in this morning, she's making white rice with carrot sauce. Yes, I know. Someone watching right now is like, carrot sauce? Mm, what's that about? Anyways, Shibyo Timo, over to you. Let's talk about the ingredients yes. for our carrot sauce. I'm trying then... to do the sauce. So I added uh, onions first. The green pepper. So let's take it one step at a time. So first we have our hot vegetable oil. Yes. And then you added add what onions? Onions. And then? The green pepper. Okay. So I'm putting my crayfish, my boiled crayfish. Okay. Those are like, sh those are shrimps. Yes, shrimps. Okay. <laughs> shrimps. All right. So how long are we going to wait for that to cook? Just to power boil. Then I'm putting my pepper. Okay. And I'm um, talking the about is pepper. Last. Well, the carrots is the last thing because we still want it crunchy yes. and fresh. All right, fantastic. Now let's talk about our pepper mix. What do we have in there? I have a little bit of fresh carrot there. Oh, you do? Yes. You blended it with the tomatoes and pepper. Uh, yes, Ooh, I nice. do. Great. Okay. So, on a powdered crayfish, the other one that we blend, mm -hmm. then our rodo, tatashi, tomatoes. Oh, Depending wow. on how you want it to be spicy. Mm. But it's not too spicy. You know, when you are cooking for the whole family, you don't need to be too yeah, spicy. Yeah, you don't so, need to put too much pepper in. Yes. So now we are pouring that pepper mix pepper into the oil. Nice. I still have some pepper to add to it. Okay. If, it's, if this is not enough, enough for it. So do you want to use it? Or I'm, sorry, I'll go, I'm going to use oh, it. Oh, you're still thinking about it. I'm going now to let's use talk it. about our cow skin for more, which is here. At what point does it go into the meal? I, I'm putting that so because okay. I deliberately didn't buy the soft one. So okay. because. You know, sometimes it's some people don't really like it. So okay. I'm going to put it now for it to get boiled. Okay, to cook with the to pepper cook mix. To cook with the pepper mix, yes. Okay, great. Yes. Which uh, I'm doing now. Shebio Timo is hard at work here. Carrot sauce is definitely something I'm going to try out this weekend. I know we are, but we are nudging towards the weekend. It's almost the, almost the weekend. It's here, finally. And our rice is cooking. And uh, yes, we have our rice cooking already. Ooh, Ooh look at that. Look at that. I absolutely am looking forward to this breakfast. It's something I definitely am going to try this weekend, and I think you should too. And if you do, please do not forget to reach out to us. Tag us on all our social media platforms at TVC Connect. All you just need to do is take a picture of you making this meal, or you can send a video. 
and we would call you out on the show. Wouldn't you love that? Yes, I know you would. I know you would. All right, the next sort of five minutes is going to be... Yeah, I know. On the, the energy here from MM is crazy. I don't know what to do with it. It's all this outpouring. Anyhow, there's always going to be a setback, but a true hustler always bounces back. Well, Welcome back here. It's the second hour. Not that there was any setback in the first hour, but we're bouncing back still. Are you bouncing? I can't see you bounce, bounce now. Ah, it's too urban. Bounce, bounce. <laughs> All right. Yes, welcome to the second lap of the show. Now, if you missed the first hour, trust us, we still have amazing things lined up for the next 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Now, that's true. Now, you uh, know the second half always comes with a, a little icing on the cake, and that's exactly what we're doing here. That extra thing that, you know, we require or you require us to bring to you every single day, second hour. Yes, um, there's the icing on the cake, which is the contents, and then we are the cherry on top. I am MM Emil Koche. She means she's the cherry on yes, top. Let's I just put it so yes, it's true. <laughs> and I'm Mazino up here. Remember to stream the show live if you have to move about TVC Entertainment TV, okay? And, and also, by the way, let me just finish and tell them. Okay. Um, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok is there for you, which you can connect with us on. Uh, you want to use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC when you're making a post, okay? All right, great. Are you okay? Are you yeah, done? I'm good. I you're got good. it all. All right, fantastic, great. <laughs> all right, do not forget to download our app, which of course is available on both the Android and iOS stores. Just one click and download. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, Welcome back, this people. morning on mm -hmm. my way, there's this particular pothole. Mm -hmm. I've been monitoring the pothole. And the pothole has been going. <laughs> it's widening. And you know, a lot of things go through my mind. But like, what, there was a time when the fence f fell close to my house. I was thinking, okay, at night or something, I could mm. take up these blocks, you know, and move to that place and try to cover up. I've seen some people who on their own trying to do stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But something came to my mind. Rents around my area were increasing or are still increasing. I'm like, well, bad roads, don't they affect the value of, um, of real mm -hmm. estate? No, it doesn't. Doesn't? It does. It if doesn't. They actually do okay. Bad roads. Bad if roads. They repair it, the roads. The rents will go up. It doesn't. So more. In Lekki. <laughs> yeah? Lekki. Last month. No. Yeah. What? That, what? Ah, I think it is in there. Two months ago, I went missing? on a Lekki tour. <laughs> you know, I was like, about and then I was <laughs> Uh, the thing is because I was, I know really, I was upheld by it. And I kept on asking myself why every so drive, why are the houses here expensive? Well, it's whether you are renting, the roads are okay. bad, but it's you know accessible. What? Whether you are renting, within... wait, whether you are renting, whether you're buying, mm -hmm. it is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's, and okay, I'm like, you, you, if, 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 if I'm going to exp <laughs> expend that much mm -hmm. for comfort mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. luxury, mm -hmm. oh, darling. That the road, road. Be. I better be sleeping, be able to roll <laughs> on the road before I get into my house. So, you know, so talking about like you, my, my, uh, my indoor, who's also a real estate developer, I found out that, okay, at times, because of those price, those pricey areas and all of that, mm -hmm. and the, the details of them put into houses, because you, you've seen some houses whereby you're going into, it is fully funded, you don't even need to come with anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, in, and some of those developers are even picking international awards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lower layer, um, a Yila of mm -hmm. uh, Landway, who picked up a, a residential development. Oh, I know award. Landway, yeah. Yeah, okay. for, and when I went with my in-law to check out some of these places, mm -hmm. Those guys are doing some amazing work. Yes, oh, they have like doing, fully furnished apartments. They're doing, Man, like, you know. I feel they're doing amazing work, right? When it comes to aesthetics. I think it, I can also relate it to the restaurants we have coming mm. up these days. Great look aesthetics. And feel mm. terrible food. No. My point <laughs> is, my point is that seriously, <laughs> most of those houses, like when it rains, it's terrible. Uh. I live in Lekki. You enter the apartment, it looks great. Great. Many and it's licking, it's licking. Well, Ray, they, 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 they enter the house, I mean. They enter the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I don't know why you guys are shouting or complaining. <laughs> Leave in first stack. Ah, it's a beautiful place. Oh, that's beautiful. Traffic will fail. 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 Still watching Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Winfrey Okola, and for the news today, the forthcoming Anambra State's governorship election has taken a new twist following the defection of the deputy governor of the state, Nkem Okeke, to All Progressives Congress. 
the deputy governor officially dumped the ruling All Progressive Grand Alliance in Anambra State and pitched his tent with the APC during a meeting with President Mohamedou Buhari yesterday. The APC caretaker committee chairman and Yobe State's governor, Mai Malabuni, and Imo State's governor, Hope Uzodimma, were also present at the presidential villa to receive the party's newest member. I've been the deputy governor of Anambra State for the last seven and a half years. I don't think I've contributed positively the way I would love to contribute to society development. Of course, um, the problem is always uh, deputies are called spare tires. And I believe that I have a lot more to contribute to society and I can do a lot more. And when APC approached me about uh, joining the party, I thought, you know, seriously about Former President of the Senate, Kent Namani, has commended the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bolat Tinubu, for his con contribution to the growth of democracy and good governance in Nigeria. He stated this when he visited Asiwaju Tinubu at his Ikoi residence in Lagos after his return from the United Kingdom. He thanked the former Lagos governor for his invaluable support during his time as president of the Senate. Senator Namani said, and I quote, your many contributions to the growth of democracy in Nigeria stand strong. Your role in NADECO and your efforts along with those of others helped in terminating military rule, end quote. Senator Namani also presented his new book titled Standing Strong, Legislative Reforms, Third Term and Other Issues of the Fifth Senate due to be presented to the public on the 21st of October in Abuja. Asiwaju Tunubu thanks the former president of the Senate for his visit and advised other political actors to write books to document their experiences and efforts to build and solve the nation's problems. Let's turn our attention to judicial matters now. The Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered former Minister of Aviation, Fenmi Fanny Kaede, to, to pay a fine of 200000 for being absent at his re rearrangement or stand the risk of having his bill revoked. Justice Daniel Asego said that having gone through the court's file, he observed five different letters by the defendant seeking adjournment on the same medical grounds. Mr. Fanny Kayade's counsel pleaded with the court not to revoke his bill, saying that a letter has been written on behalf of his client, as he is currently on bed rest at Kubwa General Hospital, Abuja. He is being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on allegations of money laundering to the tune of 2.6 billion naira. He and two others have pleaded not guilty to the charges and were granted bail. Now, this is one that will really interest you today. Our tech discussion, we are joined by Chisum Ofili. Now, she's the head of recruitment at Jobama, Nigeria. Now, we're going to be discussing tech job search and solutions. It's great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you. Incidentally, this morning, I, there's an article I saw in the U.S. about how over 400,000 jobs, uh, or people left over 400,000 jobs in the past three months or so, and they are looking for jobs. In Nigeria, it's quite a different case. Yes. Because <laughs> the jobs, I mean, the, the jobs are, might not be as much as, you know, as the seekers and all of that. But then, a lot of employers have said that a lot of job seekers are not, they, do, they don't understand what it means, or they don't have what it, or they've not learned what the employers seek when they are looking for all these kind of positions, right? Now, with what you're doing with Jubberman and all of that, how can, how can job seekers, how can they get to know what is needed by the employers that they hope to work with? Well, unfortunately, um, our school curricula right now mm. has um, a cake, mm, mm. <laughs> yes, um, trainings for job seekers. So ideally, when job seekers come out, they should train themselves with soft skills that are mm. needed by the employers. Mm. Now, um, soft skills are now at par with hard skills. Employers are not necessarily looking for people that have only hard skills. They are also looking for people that have soft skills. Please, can you, what, so some people yes. might be wondering, what is a hard what skill, are, what is yes. a soft, soft skill? So, so hard skills are what you would call experience on the role, which is 
um, tech experience, working in a corporate environment and all of that, like human resource management, accounting and all that. Those are hard skills. Okay. Soft skills are emotional intelligence. Oh, okay. Um, interpersonal relationships, mm. you know, um, teamwork, mm. time, management. time management. Those all are right. soft skills, yes. And all of that. So get yourself okay. trained in soft skills. And that's you, that's yes. what, okay. Now, where does technology come in in all of this? Or how does technology come in in all of this? Well, um, soft skills are online, mm. really. And um, currently, we are doing soft skills training for free for um, job seekers from 18 to 35 years old, free of charge. So when you go online, you can get all of that, all the resources that you need. Hmm. Now, um, a lot of people are online, and they don't know how to use some of these resources to find these jobs they need. With what you do, how do people get themselves prepared to use these sort of resources, resources that you offer, say, on Jobberman, to get jobs for themselves? Well, we basically need um, computer literacy. Mm. Yes, you need computer literacy. So you should know how to search, search for jobs on Google. You need to know how to use Coursera. You need to mm. know how to use Udemy. Mm. Yes, it's basically very simple and straightforward. And how are you guys, what are you doing to bridge that gap between um, you know, the job seekers and the employers? You made mention of a free training that you are doing yes. a lot about. Yeah, yes, yeah, um, about it's on jobberman.com slash soft skills. Mm. Um, we are also posting current jobs daily. We post current mm. jobs daily. Yes. Mm. So those are the things that we are doing to bridge that gap. Mm. Do I need to register? Just, this is just something that anybody can just come in and just, and just do that. You would need to register. Yes. Mm. You would need to register because they are scheduled. So you okay. would need to register. And yes. then, and, uh, you know, now there are other platforms, say, like um, LinkedIn and all that ones. What makes what you do, what makes it unique? What's unique to your platform? We, we offer it for free, end-to-end. -end. We offer it for free, yes. Our platform is unique because we showcase jobs in Nigeria, jobs in Lagos, you understand? So that mm. makes us unique from LinkedIn and other platforms. Oh, I really, I really, I really do like it. Now, as, 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 a, job, as a job seeker and uh, with these soft skills that you, that you talk about, that you're going to put there, putting all together and all of that, what of people that don't maybe have the hard skills, people that don't maybe, they don't have the formal education, and some jobs will tell you that, okay, they need this, they need some kind of certification for it. And then some people tell you, that, look, the way the world is going now, um, certification for hard skills is not, is, not, is not the priority. From your experience, do people still need hard skills as much as soft skills? Like, in a sense, uh, certification. Now, let's just certification. From your experience, you think employers, do they still, is the trend still there for, do, for certification? as it was maybe, say, 20 in, years back yes, or so? Yes, in those days. Not really. Employers right now are looking for people that are loyal. They're looking for people that are passionate. They're looking for people that can get the job done. You know, because there are a lot of SMEs and MSMEs, small, medium-scale enterprises, and micro, small. Mm. Yes, so a lot of entrepreneurs right now looking for people that will work with them. And they understand that um, getting certifications and all that are not really necessary mm. for them to get good candidates. A lot mm. of graduates are coming out, they are passionate, they are very intelligent and all, but they don't have those certifications yet. Okay. And they understand that they can still get those certifications later. So all you need to do is get your soft skills training, get the knowledge, and yes, it will give you an edge. With an edge over. Yes. What, 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 kind of, what kind of advice can you give um, to to somebody, say somebody out there who, uh, like you mentioned now, the soft skills and then uh, this one now with the certification now, people need this kind of thing now. What kind of advice can I give to somebody who says, okay, I want to study. What do people look for? Say, you know, a lot of stuff is tech related now. I know people talk about coding. Do I have to learn how to code? What kind of hard skill can I learn that will make me more desired by employers? If somebody was maybe about to go into school, what kind of advice can you give in that particular scenario? Well, that, will, that refers to career path, well, okay. really. Yes, that's it, an entirely different, different conversation. Yes, conversation, no, yes. That's career path. So you need to know exactly what, what you, want, you to want to do, do. But somebody your says, passions. Somebody says, what is it? I know in a technology-driven world now and says, OK, I want to get into something. I want to make an impact. What kind of, um, what kind of certification do you think that would? Um, does, it always, does it always have to go around technology? Is it, is, it, is it because it's technology driven now, do I have to do something around tech to be wanted by employers? No, you don't. Mm. Yes, there, there's human resource management, there's accounting, and all of this use tech um, CRMs, really, mm. right? You understand? So basically, what you need to do is 
be computer literate, literate, know how to, to get your resources online. Okay. And you can, you don't have to study coding, you don't have to study graphics and web design and no, all, all right. of that, oh, wow. yes. All right, thank you very much. So if I want to get information about the soft skills training, I just go on the website and all the information is made available yes, to me. Yes, all the information is there. All right, thank you very much. And uh, I hope that people have gotten something from this and can go inside and pick up what they need to do to get what they need. Hey, Chidema Igbukwe Uche is here with us. She's a writer, director, and producer. And of course, she's worked on shows like Shade Corner, Yellow Wall, and the Olive Web Series. Mm -hmm. Yep, she's also here with us today, and she has a new one. It's called Moments. We'll be talking about that. But you are welcome, Chidima. Good to have you here. Thank you Love so much. Love what you're wearing, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Most all writers wear glasses. Well, <laughs> it just seems like because we're on our system a lot, a lot so yeah. I think we might have damaged our eyes. But mine is hereditary. Okay. Oh. Everyone in my family wears glasses. Oh, okay. yeah. wow. Well, it's good to have you here. Now, tell us thank about you. your writing journey. How long has it been since you were a child? Yeah, actually, funny enough, since I was a child, so when I was a child, I used to read a lot. So every weekend, it was a thing in my house, you would buy a new novel for Chidema mm. to read. So one of the things I remember very well is that there was one day my um, elder sister went to go and get a novel for me at the market, and I had read all the age-appropriate books in the man's shop. Mm -hmm. And the man just said something, if you have read everything, then write your own. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So that was like, I think that was the first time I wrote... Realization. Yes, so I... There was an exercise book, and funny enough, the book was the souvenir for my younger sibling's birthday mm. that I used to start writing a story, The Promise, mm. when I was in primary five. So, yeah, so I just started writing as a joke, like, oh, I enjoyed this thing and everything, but for school, I studied economics. Like, mm -hmm. I went all the way. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to that story, The Promise? I honestly don't know where it is. I wish I can find it. Okay. I would can you write it? Do you think you can remember I what it is? I can't remember about? the story. I just know that it's about two friends. I, that's the only thing yeah. I can remember. But Kids, I can't remember. friends. Well, let's talk about that journey. Inside of that journey, you have, um, is it created? Created, and, yeah, write uh, it. Like Oops. Yellow yellow Wall uh, and um, The Shade Corner and stuff. The like Olive. The, the Olive as well. We know you have another one coming up. We'll be talking about that in a bit, maybe even playing a clip from it mm. as well. But tell us about your creative um, process to putting all these things together, mm. that writing process. You're also a producer and also a director as well. Yeah, I, so I initially started my journey writing in the entertainment industry for blogs like news and everything. And then slowly I now decided that let me actually try TV mm -hmm. writing lifestyle and creating lifestyle projects because they are different from... Um, yeah. Films, yeah. So yellow wall and shade corner, like lifestyle. So there isn't much writing, but mostly mm. producing that happens in that process. Mm. And producing is hard, especially nah. in this country. It's How? very hard. Why exactly? It's, it's hard because there's too many things that you're thinking about. There are too many factors that is working against you. Wow, she said against <laughs> you. Yeah, I feel Share like... some of those challenges, please. Nigeria. Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about the individuals you have to work with when you're a producer or a director? Um, lucky, I've been lucky. I've heard horror stories, mm. but I've been lucky. I've been lucky to have worked with amazing people. Mm. Like some of them have become my friends. Thanks. Yeah, like um, Tamara that I used to produce her show, Yellow Wall. Like we are now really good friends. And um, a couple of other people that I've worked with. But I think one of the things mm. I tried to do or I learned from my mentors was to like study people mm. and understand that the way I associate with this person is not the way I'm going to associate with the next person so that it makes life easier for you. Like on the project, your ego is at home. Mm. The project is the most important thing. Mm. So no as a producer, no matter what is going on, the first thing on your mind is we yeah. have to finish this yeah, project. Yeah. So if we are going to fight, let's fight after mm. we have said this over. Mm. But at this moment, Whatever is going on, yes, you are right, and yes, I'm sorry. Mm. But let's get this. I want job to work with you. <laughs> I'll bring my ego. You can leave yours at oh, home. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, so are you going to be taking all of these experience, or have you taken all of this experience into your current project, which is Moments? First of, tell us about Moments. Oh, Moments! Moments is my baby. That's mm. what I usually say. Moments is my baby. It took me a year. Or we actually went into production. Okay. So Moments is a story about life, about friendship, and about men. So um, when I say About life, friendship, and who? And men. men. Why men? What do we so do? So the story is about four male friends, and it's about their journey. So these men, for me, what I usually tell people, like my pitch for the stories, uh -huh. um, forgive me, is like when we say on Twitter, 
men has come. Hey -oh. What are the type of men that we are having in mind that we'd rather have? Okay. So that was the story. Okay. More like describing the different yes. kinds what, what of men and their scums. No, 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 want? not them. Like the good, the men that yeah. we are hoping for. The that we are uh, having our mind. That doesn't exist. <laughs> that you want. That God did not create. So basically, these men... They are there, Mazino. They are there, funny enough, because I use my real life friends as um, inspiration Expert. for this story. Oh, nice. I feel like when they're going to watch this movie, they're all going to call me off and I say, this is me, <laughs> this is my story. So basically, just like men that are emotionally available, men that go to therapy, men mm. that cry when they mm, need to cry, nice. men that, that learning how to fall in love, mm. how to deal with whatever wow. it is that's coming. On what planet are yeah, they yeah, living? Exactly. <laughs> they exist in moments. Yeah, I mean, okay. I would like to know what came to mind when you decided to put this story out? Um, so, my, it was a case of, I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to be like, okay, this is a bad man. He's doing bad, bad, bad thing. And then, at the end, he now realizes what is good. And then, so I was like, let me actually show that this world can exist. Mm. Do you understand? Like, you don't need to preach. Sometimes, you just need to, people need to see show somebody else doing Different. something. And they're like, oh, it's actually okay for me to do this. So, I was like, I'm tired of, like... Just seeing this mm. man is not his wife in the story. This man is doing this. And so I was like, there are just other things that men go through. Like, I have male friends and I see them go through stuff. different things. And I'm like, mm, you see them at their not, vulnerable moments. Yes, people are not paying attention she to these moments. You're an angel. <laughs> well, you know what? Thank you know, you. while my uh, Mazino is basking in his animal <laughs> screen in here, it's let's so watch. Okay. I, I must say that it's already aesthetically pleasing. Yes. Thank I you. love the, the faces and the, I love what I... Yeah. Tell us about Tell it. Tell us about it. Tell, that particular scene. Okay, what's going so on there. this is one of my favorite scenes in this story. Okay. I think when I finished writing this, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm proud <laughs> of myself. So basically, the lead character um, played by Michael Ejo, mm -hmm. his name in the story is Cassie. So Cassie is the lead. Cassie is it's Cassie and his friend's story that we are um, going to hear. So for this scene, this is Marisa. And Marisa, he just, just started working at the office and he feels like, at this point, he's still trying to understand whether he's going to start liking her or not. Mm -hmm. And he's like um, a G. Mm -hmm. He knows what's up. So the wine was his way of like establishing mm -hmm. communication with her and like making her feel at ease in the office. But there's so much layers to their story yeah. that there's complication. There are, there are lies, there is truth. And there in is... all of this, the guy is an angel. No, of, uh, obviously. There's yeah. nobody that's fully <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, But I, 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 I want to say I yeah. love your direction mm -hmm. here, where you're not bashing men, like you said, from every other Nollywood yeah. or, you know, production. Um, but instead, you're actually showing samples of what men could be. And you, yeah. in, 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 by so doing, you're actually educating us how to get better. Mm. However, now when we look at that clip there, was that exactly how you envisaged it in mm. your mind? In your mind's eye when you're putting together when this, you, yeah, when did it come writing. out exactly like so? Okay, so what this clip, funny enough, is the clip that we used to audition these actors. Oh. So, like, during the audition, they already did it so well that I was, like, very excited. Mm. So when we shot this scene, it was one of the easiest things where, like, oh. obviously, you guys already know, we have done this thing, like, four times during audition, so... So it was just a walk in the park when it was time Exactly, to and the actors, they're amazing. Like, I can't mm. wait for people to see the people that are in this movie. You have so much yeah, faith in I people. See, yeah, because I, I see that you used a lot of new... You used a few new faces that was in very, the industry. Yeah, it that was, was deliberate. very, 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 very important to me. Okay. Because I think one of the things I wanted to do with this was to, like, prove a point. Mm -hmm. To, like, prove... It's important to be very popular. Okay. Don't misunderstand okay. me. I always say that if you are going to cinema, please use popular faces because oh, yeah, you true. need to sell. But when it comes to series, give people the opportunity. Oh, so one so of the things I tried to do was like mix it up. Like I had people like Ibrahim Suleiman, Michael Lejo, Uzama Konoha is like one of the mm -hmm. young um, actors, actors in yeah. the industry. Well, and we can't wait to see right, this yeah, series now. It's actually very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. We want to see some more and get people yeah. outside or at home to actually see some more of it. But I love your direction, love everything about it, and I, I really want to see this. Let's take a couple of uh, another clip, and uh, when we get back, we'll have to demand the kitchen, and uh, we'll be giving her something very delicious to eat. Taste even better. I know, right? And to think that I'm down to my penultimate bottle, I knew that I should have brought some more back home. Is that why you are drinking my gift? Wine is best enjoyed with company. <laughs> Who said that? The manufacturers of the wine. Really? Yeah, really, like, if you twist the bottle fast enough, I'm sure you'll be able to see it somewhere. 
<laughs> You're funny. I try, I try. Meanwhile, I got the documents you sent earlier. Okay. That is quite a large number of shareholders. Mm -hmm. Did you receive the files I sent? I did. And? And you look at the time. I'm off the clock. Well, look at you. I, on the other hand, still have a lot to do. Oof, there is always work tomorrow. Well, thank you for the wine. It tasted really nice. Wow, I can take a hint. Very subtle, yet polite way of telling me it's time to go. I did not say that. But you kind of implied it. Well, we have run out of things to talk about. Really? That's impossible. We've barely spoken. You know what? Ask me anything. All right. Thank you very much, Didi. Thank that you. was very, very beautiful. It looked really nice. I Thank can't wait so. for it to be out. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the kitchen. This is Chef Shibu Timo. And that's yep. Mike. Shidima, you're Masika welcome. Over there. You're doing a great morning. job. Hi. Well done. Thank so nice. you. You'd be, morning... I want you to be my mentor as a writer. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, right now, she's made um, rice and carrot sauce for you. We would like mm. you to please, please um, have a taste. So are you inviting me again tomorrow? Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, we want to be here. Yes, I agree to be my mentor. Please. I will invite you. <laughs> you. Oh, yeah. Please <laughs> enjoy. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, so that uh, it looks good. Um, so far, we've had a nice show, right? Well done, Shibuti Maimu. Well done. This looks really it won. It, really it, it nice. is. It is. It is wonderful. It Love is wonderful. It? I don't know. Can I? Yes, please. It's all yours. It's all yours. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. Nice. We've Thank had you. a fantastic Thank show you. so Thank far. You. Thank you so much, Didi, Thank for being for here. Thank you, Chef Shibu Tima. And of course, you. let's not forget Mazino and Winfrey. They're on the couch. And you like any last things you like to Trust say? us, we were engrossed in a totally different conversation here. Very, very different. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. But in I any noticed. case, hey, we had quite a time on the show here today, didn't we? Definitely did. I mean, it's always a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, a blast. it Catch is. Catch you guys on a Friday. Friday edition tomorrow. Mm. And it is... See you tomorrow. Yes. Mark <laughs> <laughs> is such a cute joy. My Thank you so God. much, guys. We love you. Have an amazing oh, day. Bye-bye. <laughs>